You might have heard of SRS, and no, it's not the joker's why so serious. Instead, it is Supplementary Retirement Scheme, a scheme that is meant to encourage Singaporeans to save and invest for old age. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. In this video, I'll be introducing SRS to you and whether you should be contributing to it or not. Because unlike what the banks and articles tell you, sometimes it is better not to contribute to SRS. There's a lot to talk about, so let's start right now. There's only two things that are certain in life, death and taxes. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about death. When it comes, you will just get a grey screen while waiting for respawn. The more noob you are, the more grey screen you will see. However, with SRS, it allows you to evade tax, legally of course. To explain how it works, I'll give a quick intro about the Singapore tax system. Let's say if you are earning $70,000, your income tax rate will be 7%. On your first $40,000, you will be taxed $550. Then, the remaining $30,000, you will pay 7%. Now, here's the magical part, so listen carefully. Whatever you have contributed into SRS, you do not have to pay any tax right now. But of course, there's a cap lah. Otherwise, if everyone contributed into SRS, no one will have to pay any tax. That would be bad, right? If no one pay any tax, what will the government and civil servants eat? Nasi padang with only nasi? Milo peng with only peng? So Singaporean and PR can contribute up to $15,300 and foreigners can contribute up to $35,700. Anyway, if you are Singaporean and you fall into the 7% tax bracket and you contribute the mass amount into SRS, you will be saving $1,071 every year. Contribute lesser to nation building achievement unlocked. That's not all. If you look at the tax bracket, the higher you earn, the more you will be taxed. That means the more you earn, the more you will save on taxes by contributing to SRS. Now you know how SRS can help you save money. Now, Let's talk about the bad parts about SRS. As the name suggests, it is called Supplementary Retirement Scheme where it will benefit you if you withdraw during your retirement. Otherwise, it will be called Supplementary Pao Pao Cha Scheme where you can withdraw anytime to buy Pao Pao Cha. Now, of course, you can withdraw from SRS anytime. But, but if you withdraw before your retirement, you have to pay 5% penalty and tax on whatever you have withdrawn. On the other hand, if you withdraw during or after 62 years old, you only need to pay tax on 50% of the withdrawn amount. Let's refer back to the tax chart. So if you withdraw $40,000 every year, your taxable amount is 50%, which is $20,000. Hence, you do not have to pay any tax. So that's the bad part about SRS. You can contribute to it to save money, but you cannot anyhow withdraw until you are 62 years old. After you contribute to SRS, your money will sit in there and wait for you to collect it 30 to 40 years later. Kind of like a childcare. You put your kid there, then go off to work and collect him end of the day. While your money sits in there, it will earn a whopping 0.05% per annum. Walao eh, who does that kind of stuff? Like that, the inflation eat up my money lor. Apparently, there are a lot of people doing that. The finance ministry showed that 28% or 2.99 billion of SRS funds is sitting there earning 0.05% per annum. If you are one of them, don't do that. Invest your SRS money where you can get a much higher return. But same as the CPF, the SRS also has a list of stuff where you can only invest your money in. That's because the government cares for you and don't want you to invest in crazy stuff like Bitcoin. Instead, here are the list of approved investments. I will just refer to Sidney's website, bonds, like the Singapore Saving Bonds, SGS Bond, or even the recent Astra or Temasek Bonds. ETFs. To find ETFs that are available, you can go to Fund Supermarket, choose ETF Selector, Future Payment Method. You'll see all the ETFs like ABF Singapore Bond Index, Nikko M Singapore STI ETF, Spider STI ETF. Fixed deposits by banks. Robo advisors, endowers, and stash away allow you to use SRS to invest. Stocks that are listed on the SGX market, like DBS, OCBC, Maple Tree Weeks, and stuff. Take note that whatever dividends you have received, it will be put into the SRS account instead. Insurance products, which are recurring single premium products, like NTUC Income Guaranteed Life Annuity or Menu Life Retire Ready. Regular stress savings, like OCBC Blue Chip Investment Plan, POSB Invest Saver. Philips Share Builders Plan, mutual funds like Lion OCBC Global Core Fund, Schroeder Asian Income Fund, or anything that's offered by SFM1 and Awiwa's Navigator. As you can see, you can use SRS to invest in a lot of stuff, some of which like stocks and ETF that can deliver 5% return or more. SRS sounds good right? It allows you to save on taxes while investing for your retirement. So you should contribute to SRS right? Hmm, it depends. 
Let me explain. Number 1. Future tax rate. I will go a little math here, so please bear with me. This is Xiaoming. Let's say Xiaoming fall into the 7% tax rate and is 30 years old right now. Xiaoming is very ons. Every year, he contributes $15,300 to his SRS. When he retired 32 years later, with a 5% investment return, he will have almost $1.3 in his SRS. Xiaoming will be withdrawing from his SRS over 10 years. That's about $13,000 per year. But remember that you are only taxed 50% of the withdrawal from SRS. Every year, Xiaoming will pay $2,239 in taxes. After 10 years, Xiaoming will have about $1.26 Not too bad. Compared to Xiaoli, who earns the same, but she is not so ons, so she doesn't contribute to SRS. Her $15,300 gets taxed 7% or $1,071. When she retires 32 years later with a 5% investment return, she will have about $1.19 million. That's a $67,390.27 difference. Quite a huge savings there. However, here's the danger. There's no guarantee that the Singapore tax rate will remain the same 30 years later. There has been talks in the past that the government should raise income tax for the rich. So even though Xiaoming saves on income tax by contributing to his SRS, he will potentially have to pay more tax when he retires in the future. Instead, if Xiaoming is an entrepreneur, let's call him Da Xiaoming because he's a boss now. If he's in a 20% tax bracket by contributing to SRS, again, he will have about 1.26 million. No change there. But if Ta Xiaoming don't contribute to SRS, he will be taxed 20%. After 32 years, with a 5% return, he will have about $1 million. That's about $234,125 difference. In theory, he will have a much higher buffer for future tax increase. He will be penalized as hard if the government decides to raise the tax in the future. So the lesson here is, the more you earn, the more it will make sense for you to contribute into SRS. Second, investment choices. The problem with SRS is, your investment choices are very limited. You won't have access to US stocks or crazy stuff like cryptocurrency. As we all know, the STI ETF has been going sideways since 10 years ago. And safe good stocks in Singapore like DBS will give a steady return, but nothing fantastic. However, if you invest in good overseas stocks, your returns will be so much more. Like Tesla that ran up over 500% since last year, or ARK which ran up 300% over 5 years. You will earn so much more than the tax you will have to pay. On top of that, Singapore does not have capital gains tax. Whatever you have earned is entirely yours. So if you think you can get a much better return by investing in overseas stocks, you should not contribute to SRS. On the other hand, if you want a safe but slow and steady Bombay P investment style, like investing in Singapore Blue Chips Company and get a 5% dividend every year, you can just contribute to SRS instead. I have done a video showing my Singapore dividend stock portfolio. Do check it out if you want to know which Singapore dividend stocks are good. Third, retirement age. For most people, they will be retiring at 62 years old. But recently, there's a new trend called financial independence retire early, short for fire. As the name suggests, these people will try to save and invest as much as they can so that they can achieve financial independence and retire early. How early are we talking about? It can be as early as 30 years old, which is incredible because they no longer have to work for money. According to Retire with FI on Reddit, here are some Singapore bloggers who have achieved fire, some of which succeeded at 35 years old. How it works is this, as long as your passive income is higher than your expense, you no longer need to work for your money. Instead, your money is now working for you. For example, if your expense is $30,000 a year, you will need $750,000 giving a 4% return so that you don't have to work for money. So if you are aiming to retire in your 30s or 40s, it does not make sense to contribute to your SRS because you won't have access to your money until you are 62 years old. But if you do not plan to retire early, SRS will be a good way to save on taxes. With that being said, regardless of whether you plan to use SRS account or not, you should still open one. Here's why. The current SRS withdrawal age is 62 years old. If you open an account and transfer $1 in, you get to lock in your withdrawal age. Otherwise, there's a chance that the government could possibly, maybe, perhaps, increase the SRS withdrawal age in the future. Then, you can't withdraw at 62 years old anymore. So, by opening the SRS account now, you get to lock in your retirement age and have the option to contribute to it when you decide to do so. Besides, opening a SRS account is actually quite fast. It will take you less than 5 minutes. You can either open with OCBC, DBS, or UOB. Let me just quickly show you on DBS. After you log in, go to Apply, Supplementary Retirement Scheme, then click Instant Apply. Transfer in $1 and you are done. 
So simple. In summary, by contributing to SRS, you will save on taxes. But whether you should contribute to it or not will depend on a few factors. And that's all for today. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you contributing to SRS? Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. See ya!